All right, guys. Hey, it's Gavin here, and I'm actually at home right now, and I've got Am and Bundy on the line. You know, we've had a lot of things going on this year. There's been a lot of a lot of debates and discord and division and disunity, but especially in the last couple of weeks, you know, there's been a lot going on, a lot of a lot of name calling. Sometimes sometimes things get a little out of hand, but I wanted us to sit down with Ammon, and I've actually got a few questions that I'm going to ask Ammon in particular. Let me know if you guys can hear me, okay? I've got Ammon on the line, and I just thought, well, maybe Ammon could talk to us a little bit, and we could get some focus again, kind of get back to, you know, what was the Bundy Ranch all about? What was what was Oregon all about? What's Liberty all about? And so, Ammon, are you there? Yes, Gavin. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. It's good to hear from you, and I know uh, people out here will be very, very happy to hear from you. Um, it's... Uh, it's uh, been an, an interesting year, an interesting couple weeks, and we're just sitting here wishing things would hurry up, waiting for those not guilty verdicts so you guys can all get out of there. <laughs> well, you're not alone, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I know. Well, let me, let me, let's, let's talk about a couple issues, and we might chat a little bit about them, but I, I particularly am and want to know how you feel on some of these things. And we get a lot of disputes and a lot of faction, I think, going on. And oftentimes it's hard to get rid of that unless we're immediately in the thick of, of something. You know, I remember at Bundy Ranch, the faction to a, to a degree went away because we were in the middle of something that was intense. And so people came together and they set aside their differences a bit better. But I just got four or five questions here and then we can talk about whatever. But I thought you'd be able to address these. And the first one, and this comes up a lot. And it's it's controversial, but I think we need to consider it, all of us as liberty lovers, is we have government and we have laws, you know, protecting police, and we have we have blue lines and we have factions created from this. But let's get down to the basics of it. In, in your mind, what makes a good cop? What 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 is a good cop? What do they do and how can we identify them? Well, I I think um and that is an interesting question, uh, but I think you have to look at, in order to find out or, you know, come to the conclusion of what a good cop is, um, you have to uh, look at what his job is. Right. And um, his his job, sole purpose, in which the hi people hired him for, him or her, is to protect uh, the individual's life, to protect their liberty, and to protect their property. And that is it. And uh, it, was, it is not, it certainly is not the officer's job to protect the bureaucrats' uh, power. Uh, it's certainly not their job to protect the bureaucrats' uh, laws. And uh, it is simply and very, uh, very clear as we look at how law enforcement, if you want to call it that, uh, we could talk about that in a little bit. But right. Uh, how they came about, and that was to protect the individual's life, liberty, and property. So um, a officer that might be uh, out and about uh, doing other things is not necessarily doing his job. Um, and it, it's not even that simple. Uh, I guess let me, let me back up just a little bit. Um, this whole law enforcement uh, idea, uh, even calling them law enforcement, is something that uh, has only been crafted in the last 30 years or so. Um, we didn't call them law enforcement uh, 30, even 20, in an inmate facility. 30, even plus 20, 20 plus years ago. We, right. They were called you know, police officers, peace officers, but originally they were called officers. And uh, their job was literally to protect life, liberty, and property. And that was the only reason why they were there. And uh, now what we have is we have the bureaucrats, the head of these agencies that have created all these laws and uh, for their own benefit, for their own power. And now they say that these uh, individuals, these officers, are law enforcement. Right. Uh, which is not true. That was never their purpose. Their purpose was never to enforce laws. Their purpose was to protect life, liberty, and property. And, and I hope that makes sense because there is a huge difference. Yeah, I think it makes um, a lot of sense. And uh, uh, so that, that kind of gets us started, Gavin. I don't know if that 
answers your question. Uh, no, I, I think that's uh, really good. Going down that road. Yeah, because really it but, sounds um, like it comes down to our rights, which aren't given you know, by... Does that make sense? Yeah. It does. Can you hear me? Gavin? Can you hear me? Are you there? Hang on. Gavin, uh, Ammon, you there? You there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I hear you now. I couldn't there for a little bit. Okay, something's wigging out. Let me switch it over here. Can you hear me now? Hang on. Let me figure out what's going on here. Somebody's messing with me. Muted. Unmuted. Ammon, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, there we go. I don't know what happened there. All right. Um, uh, yes, I, that does answer my question. I think that was good, and I think really... It comes down to we have rights. They're not given by, but they're affirmed by the Constitution. And this is why I get so frustrated with officers. You know, it's like the guy I talked out to in front of the courthouse the other day, the, the federal officer. I get really frustrated because they're always passing the buck. And they're saying, well, that's not my job. I say, well, aren't you going to defend us? Aren't you going to protect our rights? And they say, well, I'm not in that building. I'm over here. And it seems like we always have an excuse but to me, what makes a good cop in a way is, is not one that doesn't kick us in the head on the side of the road. A, a, a good cop is the one that, it's, that stops the ones who do that. I, and I, it sounds like you would be on the same page with that. Yeah, and it's difficult because from an inmate facility. it's difficult. It's difficult for us and it's difficult for them too because there's a tremendous amount of pressure that's put on them to basically be law enforcement not right. protectors of life, liberty, and property. Right. And they're actually threatened with their livelihood. They're threatened exactly. that if they don't do what they're supposed to do according to the bureaucracies, that they will lose their job. And, you know, you've heard it, I've heard it, many people have heard it, that I'm just doing their, doing my job. Yeah. And actually the other day in here I heard a guy say, well, I'm just paying my mortgage. That's what he said. Wow. Okay. You know, right before he did a... You know, right before he did a strip search on me, he said, you know, and, I, and I'm questioning him about my rights, about the Bill of Rights, about, right. you know, my Fourth, Fifth, and Sixth Amendment, uh, my rights that are protected by the Fourth, Fifth, and Sixth Amendment. And I'm saying, look, you know, this, I'm not a convicted man. I should not have to strip in front of you. Exactly. And, uh, and be strip searched by That's you. That's gross. But he says, you know, no, I have to do it. I'm paying my mortgage. It's, so, yeah, moral, yeah. moral. Yeah, and that's where it becomes, you know, difficult because that individual is making a personal decision. Um, and uh, and each person makes those decisions themselves, and they have to determine what they're going to do and what they're not going to do. Right, and, right. Uh, okay. And what we need, Gavin, is we need officers that say no. Yeah, we and need officers that say no. To, yeah, they, 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 we need officers who are willing to say no, they're, they're willing to understand the principles of freedom. And yes, some might lose their job. But you know what? It's better than us losing our freedom. And right. their whole job is to protect our freedom. Right, exactly. So, and so, that, it, yeah. It, I think you're spot on. This kind of leads into the next question, and, and I love that even though they have you in chains and they're trying to keep you down, you're, you're still raising these questions, and it kind of goes to my next question. If, if we've, we've kind of established fundamentally the foundation of a good cop, but the next question is people that speak up are always getting, getting attacked if they're not saying the norm, and I guess my question to you is, is it right to question officers, and if need be, is it right to disobey an officer's unlawful orders when we come to that point? Um, we, that's very interesting because I, I want to go back to the Bundy Ranch. Right. Okay. There were several incidences building up where the Bureau of Land Management, you know, agents that wanted to claim that they had law enforcement authority. Right. Uh, came in and abused us, it literally beat us to the ground, tased us, threw us on the ground, sick dogs on us, pointed their guns at us, you know, arrested us. I mean, they did all these things, okay? And we protested them very heavily and basically saying, you don't have authority here, you don't have a right to be here, you know, you're destroying our our uh, liberties, you're, you're taking our property, and you don't have 
uh, a right to do that. And it, and I look back on those videos because we're constantly involved in that because we're, you know, we're in this defending what we did. Right. And I feel so justified in our actions, in standing up to them. Absolutely. And standing up to their abuse and standing up to them taking our, our, our trying to take our ranch after 140 years and standing up to them beating us and all of that. Right. And then... Then we look at how it progressed. It goes all the way to till April 12th, and we get underneath that bridge, and we're yeah. telling the BLM to go home, and they're telling, they're, they're pointing guns at us and saying they're, that we, you know, that uh, that basically they're going to use force on us, and that's the scenario. And then here, here comes down the wash from an inmate facility, two officers, and they're dressed in different clothing. They come right through all those BLM guns, right past all those federal agents, and walk right up to the fence, and we immediately recognize them as our county sheriffs, at least the county sheriff deputies. Right. Deputy Tom Roberts and another uh, deputy. And it was amazing. It was almost, it was, it, it was so powerful because you could feel that that man had authority. And we recognize that. And he said, Ammon, you know, my name is Deputy Tom Roberts, and I'm here to help. What do you want me to do? Right. And I said, hey, you have authority here. You tell us what to do, and we'll listen to you. And I, and I stood up on the fence, and I pointed to Dan Love, who was the head of the BLM, and I said, this man here, I said it to the crowd, does not have authority here. And I pointed to Tom Roberts the county sheriff, and I said, this man has authority here, and and we will do as he asks. And he asked us to back away a little bit, get about 20, or 20 feet or so away from the fence, and then he turns around and he demands that the BLM put down their weapons and back away. And guess right. what happened? They did. <laughs> they did it. Right. They did it. So then Ammon... Can I can I interject here just a little bit so you can address this? It seems like, and I think maybe this will go back to John Locke and our founding fathers, authority ultimately comes from God or our natural rights, if people prefer. It comes from life, liberty, and property and protecting it. So this sheriff, had the sheriff been violating you, he wouldn't have had authority. In fact, this the, the whole Bundy Ranch incident, had the sheriff stepped up sooner, would have come out very differently. But the sheriff had authority not only because he was an elected official, elected by the people, but his authority was made valid by the fact that he was defending life, liberty, and property. Am I understanding right in terms of what, where you're going with that? That, that, is, that is exactly. It is twofold, Gavin. It is, one, does he have authority given to him from the people? Right, And we need to talk a little bit more about that. But two, is he using that authority properly? Which the proper way, the only proper way to use that authority is to protect life, liberty, and property. Right. When you're protecting a bureaucracy, when you're techie, protecting, um, you know, someone else's power, someone else's, uh, you know, uh, ideas or social theologies, then you're no longer using that authority correctly right and so it's twofold and that's exactly right that that sheriff deputy came down here there to protect life liberty and property and we immediately recognized it and second he or maybe even first i don't know uh he had the authority from the people right and uh l let's address that a little bit um this call is how, an inmate facility. How did that sheriff deputy get authority from the people? He, he was deputized by the county sheriff. Right. And the county sheriff received that authority through an election. The people voted to give that person, the county sheriff, to give him the policing and arresting power that the people held. Right. And there is no other way. You can't have a federal agency that goes to a law enforcement school and then gets a certificate from some, you know, teacher or from, from school, and then all of a sudden now they have the authority to arrest you, to break down your door and come into your home, you know, to, to uh, police you, 
to take your property, to do all those things. They Just because they went to law enforcement school does not mean that they have authority. That authority comes from the people, and it's given to a certain person, either a man or a woman, through right. an election. It's and a that delegation. Is why the sheriff, that is why the sheriff has to be and is the uh, supreme law enforcement officer in the county. And no one can come in and enforce law inside his county without his permission, without him deputizing it, deputizing them, or and, and authorizing it. And that is the way that the people are safe. So that essentially, and, th- and this is something I think people forget, and I, I, is that, and it's probably going to cut us off. So we might want to have you call back one more time because we got a lot of listeners, and these are good words. And by the way, Lisa is in the stream too, and she said she loves you. And uh, lots of people in there <laughs> shouting out to you. But um, I think it's important then for the people to know one minute, one minute remaining. And it, that, that you can only give authority that you have. So, for example, the people often say, well, people will tell me when a, when a lawless law is passed that violates our rights, they'll say the people have spoken, right? They'll say the people have spoken. They created the BLM. Well, the people don't have a right to act outside the authority that they already have, just like the Congress doesn't have a right, just like the the sheriff or or the the enforce, law enforcement officer, they can only act within authority given to them by the people that the people had a right to give them in the first place. That's correct, and there's nowhere where Congress gives the BLM or even the people give Congress right. the authority for the BLM to enforce law. There is none. It is not there. No, Congress has no authority to make new agencies that make new laws. They're supposed to be the lawmakers. Ammon, I know they're going to cut us off in a second, Your time is up. so call me back. Call pending. Okay, guys, hopefully we'll hear back from him in just a moment and uh, get the word out on this. It sounds to me like everybody's hearing okay. I see you guys in there. Um, and what, what powerful words. Here's the thing, guys. We need to get focused again. Ammon is talking about boldness. Look what they did in, in Oregon. Look what they did in, in Nevada. Look at what happened when we stood together instead of saying, let's obey fake officers. Let's obey lawless authority. We need to come together. Unity means finding a like-minded principle, right? It means coming together. It doesn't mean we agree on everything, but it means coming together with one mind to stand up for what we believe. And what is that? It's liberty. It's our constitution. It's for everybody. And I got a couple more questions I'm going to pose to Ammon as we wrap this up and just try and cover this. Honestly, we could probably talk for hours, but if we go too long, it's probably going to be uh, too much. Hang on a minute. Let me make sure that, uh, oh man, let's see. I think my phone messed it up a little bit. So uh, hopefully he'll call right back Um, because we certainly, there he is. Okay, hold on. Call from Bundy. To accept this prepaid, all phone calls are subject to monitoring and recording. You Maybe have they'll actually listen to this one. Thank you for using Amtel. You there, Ammon? Hey, Gavin. Yep. Okay, well, hey, people are loving the information you're given. Let's go on and... You know, we've talked about lawful authority. We've talked about the the sheriff's, uh, you know, what makes a good cop, what makes a cop in the first place. And I think you addressed that really well. And we could go in in more in deeper on it, I'm sure. But let's go on a little bit. And I, I think this one is fairly simple, but I wanted to present it to you. Is it ever okay, you know... I don't care who you are, right? Because a, a civilian has a right to defend his rights. It has, he has a right to defend his family, just like an officer has a duty to do the same for us. But it's my belief that our rights end where another's begin. And so is it ever okay to silence someone's right to speech? Because we see that a lot out here from all kinds of factions, right? That faction needs to be quiet. We need our free speech. And so we see a lot of discord. But I guess the question really is, is it ever okay to silence someone else's right to speech? You know, Gavin, uh, I would love to answer that question, but I need to draw one more conclusion on the last topic before I... Oh, yes, please. Go ahead. And that is, you know, we talk about the sheriff's authority and how he has the ultimate authority, a policing and arresting authority, because it comes from the people, directly right. from the people. And I want to ask a question, or at least have people think about this. If the federal government, and I'm just going to 
hypothetically right. <laughs> right. Laugh when I say it. <laughs> if the federal government become predatory upon the people's rights. Right. Right. And they come down among the people in the states and in the counties and start taking their rights away, their lives, their liberties, their properties away. Mm -hmm. Who is supposed to stop them? The sheriff. You're right. The sheriff, we've hired him to do that. Right. And our country, our foundational principles of, of this nation were built upon that. Right. Our founders knew that the potential for the federal government or any government in that matter that 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 fact is that they would be they would be predatory upon the people's rights absolutely and so there was check and balance put in place and my question is this if the sheriff's job is not to to do that then who's going to do it right well at that point it's it, not it, a question of whether the whether the federal government is going to be predatory or not Right. It's a question is, is who's going to stop them. Well, and if the sheriff refuses to stop them, I would say that historically and morally it falls back to the people. That's exactly right, because it's the people's rights anyway. Exactly. And that's what happened at the Bundy Ranch. The sheriff yes. would not step up. We were not going to allow our rights to be taken. So we, we stepped up and began to protest them. And then finally the sheriff protests the sheriff, too, for not doing his job. Sure. Finally, the sheriff came in and ultimately did his job. But my point is, is if if we think that the federal government is and we're some subsidiary of the federal government and we cannot stop them from doing what they want to do because they're the federal government, right? We are in a complete incorrect mindset. It is. Yeah, it is our really to are. stop them. And uh, for example, let's just go one step further. Uh, although I completely disagree with the UN, we'll talk about that another day. Right. But what if the UN came into the states and began taking the people's life, liberty, and property? You know, oppressing the people. Then whose duty would it be to stop them? The sheriff and and the and the people. It's their the right sheriff. as well. Yeah. But but and yeah. if and it when the sheriff, the sheriff, it would be the state. Right. It'd be the federal government's duty to stop them. Right. Well, and it'd also be, at that point, the militia, who are the people themselves. But the people don't... Or the people themselves, yeah. that's right. Through through the uniting of the militia or whatever means is necessary. So the point being is that that is, that is what our protection is. Right. And our sheriffs across this country uh, have forgot what their duty is. I know. Forgot, and they either forgot or they've never learned. Right. Their responsibility, first and foremost is to protect the individuals in their counties' life, liberty, and property. Right. Against awesome. Against the state, against the federal government, or against the U.N., or anybody else, or against another individual. Right. Right. It's, it, it, it's so simple when we, when we get down to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Do you well, want... One, one more point. Yes. I know we got to move on, but one last thing. And why is it so important that the sheriff is the one that polices and arrests in your county. And my answer is because if the people are not happy with the way he's doing it, exactly, then they can elect him out. Right. They can even recall him. Right. They got full control of that sheriff, and he answers to them. And the state doesn't answer to them directly. The federal government doesn't answer to them directly. But the county sheriff answers to them directly. Exactly. And if they're being abused, they can get them out of there quick, resolve the problem and therefore be protected under their life, their liberties and their property. That's awesome. That's a, you're exactly right. And 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 the message is gaining ground cuz there's people in the stream here Ammon, answering the questions as you, as you pose them and getting them right. So, really <laughs> it's not in vain. Okay. No, it, it's very simple. It's very simple and 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 you know these are principles. These, These are, are principles of freedom. Right, exactly. Uh, I, I'm not making them up. You know, these are our These aren't new. understood them very right. clearly. These go back even before the Constitution. So, okay, cool. Absolutely. Uh, um, the, the next question, and I'll read it again since it's been a few minutes, but I don't really think you'll have to expound on it too much. I just thought it was it, it was relevant because we have so many you know factions and political parties calling each other names out here. Is it okay to silence someone's right to speech? So my answer to that is very simple. We have an obligation when we disagree with each other. 
we have an obligation to try to get the other person to understand our view right and through words and immediately when it goes to force when someone uses physical force on somebody then it's wrong we do not have a right to do that it's a it, you know if you disagree with me Gavin or I disagree with you right it's my it's my uh, challenge I guess to try to convince you that I'm right and for you to make the choice exactly whether I'm right or not so, the, so whenever yeah. I say you know Gavin you won't listen to me now I'm going to use force on you then that's where I've crossed the line so the use of force then I mean, is always under life liberty and property because that's that's where that's what ours is so if our life liberty and property is violated and we have no recourse that's the only time when essentially the only time when the use of force is righteous is in defense of somebody using force or violence to violate your rights. That's right. When someone tries to force you to do something or to believe something that you don't want to, right. and they use force, then and only then do you have a right to defend yourself. I agree. Okay. I think that's... Uh... And same with, the, 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 you know, well, I'll just leave it there. Okay. What, you, feel free to make a comment if you want. I mean, obviously, I think well, this applies to all say, rights. You know, when a police officer's life or liberty or is 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 uh, in danger, they have a right to defend themselves. Sure. And that is the only time that they have a right. They so, do not have a right to use to use uh, take a life unless their life is in danger. Well, and it raises a hard question that we can't get too deep into to do today because we'd have to examine the incidents. But we see oftentimes where police officers, by enforcing their false statutes or their false arrests, are violating people's rights. And so I, I guess Lavoy would have been a perfect example, right? Lavoy chose to lay down his life for his friends, but he had a right to resist if he had chosen that because those officers, it didn't matter that they had a badge on. They were just people, and if someone is violating your right – you have a right to respond, and I think Lavoie did did well, and he made a he made a, a spiritually inspired wise choice. But he had a right at that point to to you to defend himself. Well, and he you know he didn't even exert that right. No, he, he didn't. Stayed well beyond the the side and exactly, and they still anyway, killed him. They still um, killed him. Yeah, so, absolutely. But it, the the. You know, officers of the law have no more rights than an individual. And right. They, they also have no less rights other than it is their duty to protect. You know, they were hired and, and actually took an oath right. to protect life. So the minute that they're taking life, they've failed. Yeah. And the minute they've taken liberty, which is even – the minute they handcuff somebody, you know, then in, in a sense, their whole job is to – if it's not in defense, if it's exactly. not protecting somebody else's life, liberty, property, and they then they've just fell. They violate. They've stepped outside. They're no longer an authority because they've said, "Hey, let's say I'm going to arrest you for some fake charge because you didn't pay us some fee that we made up for you." When there's no crime and there's no violation, now they become the violator and they've stepped outside their authority. And we see this so often, and it, it's it's really hard to get back to the focus of simple defenders of liberty. Yeah, and it, but it, it is very simple, though. And it, it is. It is that the people have hired them uh, and have given them the charge to protect their life, their liberties, and their property. Right. And and whenever life, the people's life, liberty, or property is taken, in a sense, um, the the officers have failed. Exactly. And, okay. Uh, it, and it, it just it's just that simple. Awesome. Yeah, it really is. Okay, so let me address this since we're kind of going through this course, and this can be a quick one too, but what's what's happening? I think what frustrates those on the ground is, is a lot of times we get people that are saying, hey, I'm a patriot. I'm with you guys. I love the Constitution. And then they push us to not stand up for it. They push us to not question the things that you're talking about today. They they push us to to stand down. And, and I'm just speaking generally today. If how how would you address you know when we're on the ground when we're, how would you address those that are trying to insist 
that we just need to shut up and follow orders. I mean, obviously, we're not going to use force against them. They have a right to their speech, as you just addressed. But how do we address that in a principled way? Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, and I, I don't know, you know, specifically of of what's going on out there. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I live in a, a dark box. You right. Know? So I, I, so I don't want it, you know, so I just don't know specifically what is happening in, and, uh, you know, and maybe, you know, maybe you can rephrase your question a little bit more for me to try to understand a little bit more what you're, what you're, uh, getting after, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very clear, and, and, you know, I've spoke about this many, many times, even well before I went to, you know, Oregon or well before I got arrested, and that is in order to maintain your liberty, right. in order to maintain your rights, you have to claim them, meaning state and show and claim that yes. they're yours. So many right. Facility. You have to claim them, you have to use them, you have to use and be actively using them, and you have to defend them. Right. And if you stop doing those at any time, they will be taken from you. I agree. So it sounds and, to me like, go ahead, sorry, I cut you off, we got a delay here, so. No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying so that if there's an effort out there for people saying, hey, look, it is my right to speak. It is my right to speak out. It is my right to speak against government abuse or whatever it might be right it's my right to speak it might even they might even be something that we totally disagree with you know sure but it is their right and they have to claim that it's your right then they have to use it they have to actually do it yeah they actually have to speak out they actually have to and then when someone tries to take it it is important that they defend it exactly and, and i guess that's the question is how, Go, yeah, I think to rephrase it a little bit, and I think you pretty much covered it, but I guess what I see happening, and, and not just, I don't even want to address specific incidents because I don't want to fuel our, you know, infighting, but we, we've seen this all year, and you're saying we need to defend our liberties, and sometimes people are down there saying, no, you just need to protest, and you need to look to the officers to work it out for you. But it sounds to me like you're saying we just got to forge forward. We try to educate people. We we don't use we don't use uh, unnecessary force, and we just keep speaking up and being bold in a principled manner. You have to, you know, and and we have to keep teaching the people correct principles so that they'll govern themselves correctly. Right. And that goes, you know, for us, and that goes for, you know, those in in. Uh, government positions, and it goes for the officers of the Exactly. Law. Okay. Ammon, you've done great. I mean, we've really got some, some great things, and I'm sure we could do lots of other questions, but I don't want to go too long. I do want to close with one, and this, this is a personal question uh, uh, about me, because I, I have seen um, some people that that say, well, at, well, let me just be quite frank. There's some people saying Gavin's, Gavin's taking advantage of the Bundys for money and things like that. So my question is simple. I don't want to address individual instances, but do you feel that in my stand I've been in any way unprincipled from, from what you've seen or that I, in any way I've taken advantage of your family in, in our, our discourses and our, our working together? You know, Gavin, um, I have no idea where that idea would come from. <laughs> yeah, I know, um, but <laughs> and I and and I just want to make it clear that I have I had no idea that Gavin was going to even bring this up, which I'm glad he did. Um, but it's actually just the opposite. Gavin has done hours and hours and hours uh, and many more hours on top of that of helping me try to get messages out there and spending a tremendous amount of time, uh, you know, videoing and and uh, cutting and splicing and editing and all of that that he does, um, amongst other things. And I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful for all the people that have done that, like, exactly. like Shannon Bushman. You know, he, he spent hours and hours as well doing that. Right. And I can honestly say, Gavin, that I don't know of anybody that's ever taken advantage of me in this <laughs> movement. Good. And I am so grateful for that. In fact, I owe people a tremendous amount that I don't know that I could ever repay them back. 
Well, we owe you a tremendous amount too, and, and I really appreciate that, and we appreciate your effort because the truth is you, you guys have put it all on the line, and I am, and I'm so disappointed in, in myself that I haven't in the past year. I mean, my goal was like, we got to get these guys out and we're still waiting on God and we're still looking to him. But I just wish that, that we could do more. Sometimes and it's frustrating because it's so hard to get people to show up. It's so hard to get people to unite on these principles. It seems like it's, it, there's just always a distraction. It's like there's, it's, it's like the feds are working behind the scenes to constantly keep us at each other's throats. And it's, it, it's so hard for me that we haven't been able to to get you guys back to your families yet and you know so well it is coming i am certain it's coming it. uh we've you know we just constantly see you know the hand of of god in in our lives and giving us strength in our family's lives and and in all of all of you out there right uh and just remember that it is our obligation to do to love our neighbor and to do to him as we would want done to us right and and we can have differences we can believe if we can have different faith diff, different uh, ideas you know we can disagree right but the thing is is we need to unite in our preservation of our liberties exactly and and really the 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 enemy, and I, and I and I feel confident in saying this. The enemy are these bureaucrats, these these full time government employees that have made it their job to create uh, regulations that are literally strangling our freedoms. And uh, officers, you know, I speak to them as well. Anybody who's willing to enforce these policies, these regulations that are actually straining liberty, right. then they're against liberty. You're yeah. either for it or you're it's against simple. it. It's simple. It's simple. All right, Ammon. Well, that's phenomenal. Um, before we close, and I, I don't, I, I want to say a few words so you can say a few final words before they cut you off. I do want to say, and I appreciate your thoughts, and I just really want to commend all the people that have been consistent out here. And I just want to, I just want to say. Uh, in, in a particular recommendation for commendation, obviously, you know, your wife Lisa and and, and Angie Bundy have, have done really well, and and we. But in particular, I just want to mention to you uh, Sarah Redbuck, Kelly Stewart, John Lamb, Josh Martinez, Nathan Syme, Lindsay Samansky. I mean, people that that have just been working and putting yeah, it in on the I'm line to keep the message going for you. And I know you know these people. I just wanted to mention them when we were on the air. And there's many more that we could mention, but I just want to thank them and I want to thank you this has been a great conversation and we can do one whenever you want to do you have any closing thoughts before they cut you off I think you got about 30 seconds uh, no other than I just I, I can't thank everybody enough uh, just base your your uh, your stand on principles correct principles right uh, on the principles of freedom Exactly. Well, Ammon, um, we will we will talk to you soon. This was a great conversation. I know people are going to want more of them, and uh, I'll let you go. But you're in our prayers, and I I just thank you for your service, and just lift up the other guys in there and let them know that that we're not we're not stopping. All right. Thank you. Your time is up. All right, guys. So uh, hey, I hope you guys enjoy. Get the word out. So there is there's the facts, right? I don't have to always have the same style as Ammon, as Kelly Stewart, as John Lamb, but we need to get out and we need to stand up. We need to stop pretending. Hi, Angie. Hi, Lisa. Kelly. Um, we need to stop pretending that what's happening in this nation is okay. And so, guys, head over and support these guys' families. You know, we're going to keep the message going out here. We're going to try and keep the message strong. Um, get to their... Get the message out, but do something, right? Pick up a camera. Be behind the scenes like my wife is, keeping keeping us supported like Sandra does, keeping it moving. Be, be, be taking action. And I, 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 was, I was down at the Bundy house, at Ammon's house last night, and honestly, I mean, I, I had to step out of the room for a minute when, when Lisa was on the phone to Ammon be, because it made me sick to see what's being done to our families, to our children's birthright, and to America. Because people say, comply, 
follow orders, that, that those who violate us, that people say that those who trample our liberties, who violate us in the courts, who refuse to do their duty, that they must be upheld as the heroes and the peacemakers, and that to have unity is to align with those that violate liberty. To have unity and liberty means we have to come together. We need to be slow to anger. We need to be quick to forgive. But we need to haste to defend the innocent. And the reason, the reason these men are still in jail, the reason our prisons are filled with innocent people from the native to the white to the black, from, from Jeff Winehouse to the Bundys to Schaefer Cox to Ammon, to Ryan, to Jerry Dulimus, the reason our prisons are filled with innocent people and with violations of due process while traitors run our government is because we, when our sheriffs fail, are afraid to stand and we have to stop being afraid. We have to stop being afraid. We have to be strong. We have to not worry about what they say and when they hate us. We have to be willing to say, no, you're wrong. We have to speak out. We have to resist with principle. We have to fearlessly and tirelessly run for freedom or our children will always be slaves. It does matter how you stand, but you have to stand. Beware the people that say it matters how you stand, so do not stand at all because you just need to comply. We can do this. We need to honor God, honor liberty, love our neighbor as ourself. Put effort out. Don't look for someone else to do it. And it's my belief that God will honor that and give us liberty, a refuge, and, and set the prisoners free. Why don't, we take, why don't we take a moment, since we're all on here, to say a prayer? I wish we still had Ammon here, but they, they cut us off after 20 minutes. And uh, let's just do that. Father in heaven... God, we're still looking for solutions, and, and there's so much division. It seems like when we go out and we try to do right, people oppose it, and they attack us, and they hate us, but we need to be strong. You told us to marvel not if the world hate us, and we need you to be the remnant. God, how long do we have to wait? How long? Until you'll intervene. I know there's a remnant, and this nation is divided, and they're hateful towards their neighbor. Please open our eyes. But there's a few of us, God, there's a remnant. Will you save us for a hundred? Will you save us for ten? We ask that you'll intervene, that you'll tear down these walls, that you'll stop the mouths of these wicked judges and tyrants and prosecutors, and that you'll embolden us and give us real defenders of liberty and give the people the courage to stand. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go for the night. This has gone on for a while. Let's get focused. Let's stop listening to informants and, and provocateurs and people who would undermine the principles of, of liberty. Let's love them. Let's love them by telling the truth to them in love. Just like we love the, the police officer who's not doing his job by telling them the truth in love. Just like we speak out, but we need to be bold. We need to rise up and we need to stand. And that falls to you. Thanks, guys. Angie, Lisa, Kelly, all you guys. I saw a lot of familiar faces. Thanks all for being here and for your great comments. And uh, we'll try and get Ammon on here and do this again. You guys, have a good night. And God help us.